arrived in the US in 1993, almost 30 years ago, to a very dark uh, cityscape in Manhattan. It wasn't the New York you know today. I was going to school there. I was, uh, I was called a faggot. I was called an effing terrorist. I was called many other things. I spoke with an accent. I spoke with this. I looked different. I had long hair. I was clean shaven. Uh, I was people thought I was androgynous. I thought I was too terrorist like. Nothing. I didn't fit in anywhere. But every night in my school department in New York City with a blind roommate, Beginning with that, I think we were together eight months. I would cook meals where people would come and just eat. And the next thing I knew, famous people from Hollywood, from Bollywood, and all those neighborhoods everywhere would come in as guests of guests of guests. And I would cook for anywhere from eight to 20 to 100 people for dinner, using the hard earned money my father and mother had earned. Those meals brought people to the table together, and that's when I felt comfortable. And I did that by going to school at School of Visual Arts. I became a buyer for both of the a luxury retailer to stores. And I would pass the store. I would tell too cool, I can buy any of these things. But um, I would. I would uh, look at the amazing fine uh, clothing, the merchandising of home furnishings, and think. I can relate to this. I come from a land that makes brocades and amazing cottons. And then one day I just said, I'll take a job for free. I've saved up some money from the student loan. I'll work for free for three months. Maybe they'll uh, let me hire me. And I went in, they not only gave me that internship that they had, but they made me an assistant buyer. They loved my sensibilities. And my dinners continued. I got my degree. I went into became a, a merchandising director for a Berg, a Henry Bendel. And while doing that, I thought to myself, you know, I want to live in a farm. I want to live in a community that's sustainable. So we found a farm in upstate New York in a town called Hebron. Those are my two puppies. Our home, I wanted a home where we could have 200 people show up for dinner. So an 80-acre farm in upstate New York. I thought this would be amazing, a slice of heaven. Think again. <laughs> Uh, I made the mistake of putting a Hillary Clinton uh, 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 ticket, Obama uh, uh, sign, and they would come and dump their trash in our uh, driveway because they thought we were heathens, idolatrous heathen. I was called, oh, he's your help. My partner, Charlie, my lover, was blonde hair, blue eyed, and a good American boy. And I, <laughs> and I was that other that had many labels. And so one day we were buying organic groceries at too expensive a price in a small town in America. And I'd, literally we would support this woman, as I told Charlie, her store is going, going to go out of business. Charlie said, you and your dark tongue. I said, Charlie, I am the other you all hate. I know the truth. And lo and behold, two months later, her store had closed. But the last time we went, we were literally emptying her out so she would have some money before she closed her doors. And they, two neighbors who were white came and kicked me down, dropped me. And when Charlie said, hello, they said, oh, he's your boy. So they thought I was a Mexican farmhand that was helping him. And that was this idyllic neighborhood. There was a lot uh, just boiling on the pots of that neighborhood. Inside this house, this was our kitchen. We would bring friends from all over the world, and mostly our neighbors. Neighbors refused to come to our first open house because they thought this uh, idolatrous heathen, terrorist-like character, a Jew, they also called me that. All the others that they knew they had thought I was, they wouldn't come. So Charlie said, you know, what do we do? How do we at least get them to know us before they hate us? So we did. <laughs> So we did an open house on 31st of December. <clears throat> For the open house, I told all the elders of the community, bring your family. Really? You're cooking? I said, I'm cooking. None of those. I didn't want to do people to do those dinners where everybody brought something. I cooked. So we had, I prepared that if the community had 700 people living, we would at least have 150 people show up. And we had over 200 show up from five in the evening till three in the morning. They'd never had a late night New Year's party, but this home wasn't trashed. When they came and saw two gay boys cooking for them, feeding them, smiling at them, giving them mulled cider with whiskey and whatever else they wanted to put in it, they respected it. 
all of a sudden our farm became the place where uh, people would come and you know learn how to cook we created created a community garden my partner charlie i would go speak like a crazy uh, cook across the country with uh, all the commodity boards that would pay me money so i could bring back uh, vegetables to our community we lived in a farming community where nobody knew vegetables the kids thought a potato was a cauliflower cauliflower was a carrot they'd grown up with farms but nobody farmed so my speaking gigs would pay for that community kitchen garden uh, that Charlie created in the schoolyard. In Manhattan, at my restaurant Tapestry in Davie, I was cooking foods that this community taught me about. Seeing the gross uh, obesity pandemic in these uh, farming communities, I put a steak called the Indian Gentleman's Steak au Poivre. It was a two and a half ounce piece of steak, one third or one fourth the size that people eat at Peter Luger's, with just the rest of the plate being all roasted veggies. So I'm the, I'm the only chef on the Nutrition Advisory Board of Harvard Medical School. The onus upon me was to do the right thing at the table. So we, on the other side, we have a vegetable taco with all kinds of beautiful uh, vegetables and also flowers and pickled uh, fruits and veggies. The lower uh, image is of a ceviche, made Indian style with lots of herbs and aromatics. So these would be my inspiration from the farm, but I told people, it's not to the farm that I go for being one with nature. I go to the farm to be one with my animals. I had 300 animals living with me at the farm. Those animals gave me hope. They gave me love. For oxygen, I went back to Manhattan. This is fall at the farm. Again, it kept me very honest. I would use my, I developed my own uh, mortar and uh, pestle, and Martha Stewart, of course, called it her favorite. But you know, the colors of the seasons connected me to the earth. A fried egg, people have written odes about the chickens on my farm. There have been papers written on the nutrition uh, content of those chickens. I had 200 chickens of 48 uh, different breeds who lay eggs once in five, six, or once in a week. So those chickens were heritage breeds or endangered or extinct breeds that we were bringing back into America. Their eggs were amazing, their uh, nutritional content superb. Uh, our farm was called American Masala Farm. In the winter, it was so cold. We had a six month winter. We were four and a half hours from Manhattan and uh, three hours from Montreal. That's where we were. But inside, the fires would keep us all together. This uh, burger that I made was a uh, farro and uh, roasted cauliflower, mushrooms, all these roasted veggies made into a cake. In our community, people thought a vegetable was a uh, attack that made the chef had to go to prison for it. But this uh, <laughs> veggie burger changed their lives. I was shocked that all the village people would love these veggie burgers. Those are the Indian crepe with lentil and beans, it excited them. There was something flaky, crispy, with potatoes in the middle. Our family table, I, got, I did away with all the uh, linens on the table at the farm. We made it very real for people to see that we didn't have more than them. We just had big hearts that brought people in. The kitchen became the epicenter of the home. The home was from 1779, the oldest parts, to 1842, the youngest part. The kitchen is where people stayed in, so I would urge people to cook and eat together. It makes all of us do good things together. Uh, this is what made our community in upstate New York love me. The uh, spices, the colors, the textures, the taste, the sense of India. But a new word for the gentleman recording words from everybody. What Charlie and I brought to the community was an autochthonous way of living, where we were native to our uh, region, to our community, and yet bringing to it all the joie de vivre, the mindsets, the learnings, the discoveries that we'd all gained uh, by our travels. By not letting them out of what we'd gained and by respecting what they had, we created a, a safe haven for both. So in what I need, to, I need all of us to cook together, to eat together, to be at the table together, and our kids and our elders will all feel very uh, uh, indulged. And when we do that, life becomes better. So from India, learn the whole act of eating a wholesome meal with lots of colors, textures, taste together, mostly plant-based and always served with love. Thank you.